people I've enjoyed this service so far and all the, the many good words and the, the good songs this morning that Amber had sung. And uh, the Lord is good. As the, the, when the song said, uh, Lord, we, we serve you because you're good. We serve you because of who you are. Uh, we serve you because we love you, as Sister Jada had said. And uh, there's no greater one that we could love than lo to love the Lord. We can love our families. Uh, we can love our friends. We can love our, our coworkers. But we need to love the Lord even more than we love them. Uh, and sometimes that's hard. But the, but the Lord, But we can think about all the different things that the Lord has done for us. That one line, and Sister Alice referenced this line, that what a chance we've been given uh, and since the, the day we were forgiven. Uh, and... I don't. Many people don't realize when we are forgiven from our sins, that's a that's a miracle. We think of uh, people being raised from the dead, Brother Delbert. Uh, and I believe there's going to be a day coming for in the near future when we're in a funeral one day and the, the person's laid up here on the casket and the Lord's going to raise that person up. Uh, what a day that will be. And when there will be no ifs, ands, or buts, was that the Lord? It was the Lord. Lazarus was dead four days and the Lord raised him up. And uh, just as he did it, and and the, that time he's going to do it again, and we're going to see that, uh, uh, Lord willing, that we'll get to be in a funeral one day, and what a day that would be to to see somebody that's been dead, that's been that's been embalmed, that's been gone through that whole death process, be raised from be raised from the dead. There'll be no doubt that uh, people that didn't even know the Lord, they're, they're going to know that there is something greater out in this world, greater than themselves, greater than this the people out in this world, that there's something. Uh, there's a greater power out there that they can turn to. And if he can raise somebody from the dead that's been dead for four days or three days or how long it's been, what can he do for us in our, in our lives when we're, when we're alive? There's no telling what the Lord can do. You know, but what a chance that we were, were given since the day that we forgive. That's a miracle in itself. Uh, to, and people don't, I don't think people realize that, that that's a miracle. There's many, many people out in this world that will never, never be forgiven. And not because they don't want to be forgiven, because they don't know that they can be forgiven. They don't know there is a chance to be forgiven. They don't know there's a, a Jesus they can turn to. And just as being your sins being forgiven is a miracle, getting receiving that Holy Ghost is a miracle itself. The the greatest gift that we could ever ask for in this in our in our natural life is to uh, is to have the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I, I, as I said the, the other yesterday last night, that I saw these kids walking around speaking in tongues, raising their hands, walking around the church. And there is going to be a day that that's going to come to pass. Uh, and I believe it's going to be a day in this near future. Uh, the Lord is working with our young people. He's not just the young people, but he's working with everybody here in this particular church. Uh, and it, it isn't quantity, Brother Delbert, as you said, it is quality. Uh, you can look at, a, Brother Bobby tells that story about the hot dog factory where those hot dogs are mass produced and they're all exactly alike. There's nothing special about, but he is working on a people here that isn't going to be just like everybody else. They are going to be set apart. It's there. And is it first Peter two and nine? And it talks about being a royal priesthood. A, let's see. Yeah. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and a, and a holy nation, a peculiar people. That's a, it's not like a weird people, but that's a, a people that's been set apart from the rest of this world. And don't, we do want to be set apart from the rest of this world. We don't want to blend in. We don't want to be anything that's like the rest of this world. We want to be different. Uh, it doesn't mean that we have to all, all just like dress different, fix our hair different or whatever, but our, it's our spiritual life that is different. It's the, what's on the inside is what makes this different. Anybody can put on a, an outfit and make themselves look different. If I wanted to be a, a football player or look like a football player, all I have to do is put on the uniform put on the helmet, grab a ball, run around the field. But that doesn't make me look, that doesn't make me a football player just because I put on the outfit. It's on what's on the inside. And that's what the Lord deals with. He deals with what's on the inside. Uh, but we can be that peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that, to see that marvelous light, it requires that gift of the Holy Ghost. You're, to be called out of darkness, uh, you have to be made alive. And that's spiritually made alive. You are dead in, in your trespasses and sins until the Lord br brings life into your into your into your your spiritual body. Uh, just as Adam was dead, it took God breathing His breath into Adam. To, it was His breath that made him alive. And just as we're going to be made alive, the Lord's going to breathe life into us. Uh, there in it's John three when Jesus is talking to uh, uh, Nicodemus. We all know all these scriptures. Um, but Jesus is talking to Nicodemus in uh, three. I'll just start at three and five. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, 
Here, I'll start in three. G G John 3 and 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, uh, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And that being born again is receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And, and many people think the Holy Ghost is just something that it feels good. It's just something that's a, a fun thing to have. It, it's good to speak in tongues. It makes you feel good when you're in church. Uh, and those are all good things. It's good to speak in tongues, and we should speak in tongues more. Uh, and I'm talking to myself first. I should reach out and speak to the Lord in tongues more than I probably what I do. Um, but that, it's not just necessarily what it's for, but it is a requirement to get into heaven. Uh, Jesus said right there to Nicodemus that you must be born again. Uh, to enter the kingdom of God. If you don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost, then you're never going to enter the, the kingdom of God. Uh, there in Matthew 27, 52, where it says the many of the, the saints' body, the old saints arose, uh, all those ones that came before Jesus' time, David and, and Moses and Noah, all the men that were great men. David was a, was a man after God's own heart. Uh, he loved the Lord with all of his heart, but there was only so much David could do uh, because Jesus hadn't come yet. Uh, so when he got that resurrection in Matthew 27 to 52, he had to he had to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost to finish his walk uh, so he could make heaven his home. And I believe that one day when we all get to heaven and I say that when we all get to heaven, because we're all striving for this, not a matter of if we get to heaven, it's when we get to heaven. We're here because we have a desire to grow. That's why these why we're so faithful. Every Thursday night we're here, every Saturday night we're here, every Sunday morning. We are here. This group of people, this church here in Sykeston, we may be a little group, Brother Delbert, but we are a good faithful group uh, that wants something different in our lives than the rest of this world has, and maybe even the rest of this church world has. We want to see heaven. Uh, we want to see the Lord. We want to go to heaven. I want to see uh, that David, or, or my natural brother David, and my that uh, David from the Bible, I want to see him. I want to talk to him. I want to see all the different things. I want to talk to Jesus. I want to talk to Moses. I want to talk to, to Noah. All these different ones that we read through, Paul and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the ones that we read about, uh, if, we, if we keep serving the Lord, uh, then we will get to see them. We will get to talk to them. All the, and, and I find, ho I find that's a, it's a great uh, faith-building thing to know that we can see all these different people. We can talk to all these people. We don't have to just read about them, but we'll have years and years and years that we'll get to spend time with them. Uh, it's an amazing thing, and not just them, but Jesus, our, our great Father, our great friend, uh, we'll get to spend uh, eternity with him as well, get to talk to him, get to listen to his stories, get to listen to, to him teach us and, and, and preach to us. And I know Sister, Brother Bobby used to say Sister Nell didn't want to go to heaven because she didn't want to hear the preaching all the time. And and Lord, I hope there is some preaching there. I love to hear preaching. I love to hear, the, and there will be, there will be preaching, there will be singing, there will be praising, and it will be a good time there in heaven. It isn't going to be, whether it, it, your husband that said it, and New Earth isn't going to be no shabby place. If we make, if New Earth is our place, then Lord, it's not going to be a shabby place. It's going to be uh, anything far greater than what we can ever imagine. The, the, you can go to the prettiest scene here in the, in the world today. It's going to be prettier than that. I don't even know what the prettiest place is here on this earth as, as of today, but it's going to be far greater than that. And can you only imagine? Uh, I can't imagine what it's going to be like, but Lord, I want to imagine. I want to. I don't. I don't want to just imagine it, but I want it to come to fruit, uh, fruition. And all I have to do is continue to serve the Lord, and it'll happen. But there, in the next three and four, said so Nicodemus said unto him, How can the man be born again uh, when he is old? Enter the the second time to his mother's room, and he be born. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the, the kingdom of God. So he lets you know that you got to have the Holy Ghost and you got to be born, you got to be water baptized. Those are two, two different things, uh, two, different, uh, two different actions that both are required to make heaven your home. Uh, and just as I said the other serv a couple services ago, that uh, the, first fa uh, the first stage of salvation, the first phase of salvation is, re is being having your past sins forgiven, uh, to have your current sins forgiven, it, I believe it takes the Holy Ghost to have you help you along the way to, to, for your second phase of salvation, to, to can you continue to be saved, to continue to work on those things that you need to work on. It's going to take the Holy Ghost. You're not going to be able to overcome without the Holy Ghost. You're not going to be able to have that assistance that you need without the Holy Ghost working on the inside. That Holy Ghost is more than a, just a good feeling, like I said, but it helps you overcome this flesh. It helps you um, in this life. It helps you do all the things that you need to do to please the Father. And without that, you're not going to please the Father. You're not going to be victorious in this in this in this race. And we, this is a race that we were singing as that song was sung. This is a race. It isn't a race to see who gets there first. 
or that gets their last. It's a race to see who gets the, this is a race that everybody wins. It's as long as you've crossed that finish line. Um, but you have to cross the finish line. There's no shortcuts to get to the finish line. There's no detours. It's that highway to heaven. There's one shot to get there. And then all you have to do is follow the Lord's path and you can make heaven your home. And that's what we're striving for. We're here to, we're here every Thursday, every Saturday, and every Sunday to learn how we make heaven our home. Uh, this isn't something I can just learn on YouTube, uh, even though there's many preachers on YouTube today and, and all the different things that social media that people, but you can't just sit there and listen to some TV preacher or listen to YouTube, but you have to get out and you have to learn uh, by listening to the pastor over the pulpit. And I'm not saying you can't watch the, the social media, the, the YouTubes, because I watch it. I watch throughout the week. I watch the different churches in our, in our body. I don't watch uh, the worldly churches, but I do watch our body churches. And as Amber said the other day, or last night, that there are some that are kind of falling away. There are some that do have um, some weird things going on, or at least some people in the church that have some weird, I shouldn't say the church as a whole, but there are some men and women in the churches that are saying and doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And that goes for probably all churches at some point. Um, but Lord, help us to, to get on the right track. We want to stay on the track that the that they put in, in place. Um, and... and Back to the the the, quali the, the quantity. Uh, back in the, when Jesus started the church, there was only twelve. It wasn't a, a huge group of people, and he he had the twelve disciples, uh, and then the church grew, and then the church grew, and the church grew. But it's always going to be a little small group. This isn't going to be a big thing, even when the church is and in, in the latter rain, it's not going to be a big thing. It's going to be a wheel within the wheel within the wheel. There are going to be a lot more people that come in. Uh, those miracles I was talking about being raised from the dead and people being the gifts of healings and miracles come forth. That's going to bring a lot of people into the church. Uh, lots of people. Can you imagine seeing, like I said, seeing people healed in a funeral home on their deathbed? They're going to be healed and there's going to be people in here that have loss of limbs and the men are going to lay hands on uh, those people and those limbs are going to grow back. And uh, there's going to be I believe it's going to be miracles like that. People that it's not just going to be, it's going to be miracles that you can actually see before your very eyes. It's one thing to be healed of like cancer. Uh, and you can see that on a machine. Uh, but to see somebody that's been blind their whole life, uh, be able to speak, somebody that's been deaf their whole life and be able to hear somebody that was born without a limb or lost a limb in an accident to have that grow back before your very eyes. That's what's going to bring these people in. And there, but there's going to, with that said, there's going to be a persecution that comes with that. It's people are going to see that and know there's something going on with that. It's, it's not like what we're doing, not like what we're doing, what we're preaching. There's something different about that. And they are going to try to, uh, they are going to try to persecute the church. But even through all that persecution, the Lord's going to help his people, his children. The Lord will be here um, by our side. We don't have to worry about that. I'm not worried about that. We don't have to worry about the, the end times. I'm uh, wondering if, the Lord will protect us. If you're if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and living the life that you should be living, the Lord will protect his children. He'll he'll, he'll cover his people. He'll, it doesn't mean we're not going to go through hard times, uh, but we'll never go hungry. We'll never go thirsty. We'll always have a place to sleep. We'll always, in some way, shape, or form, have a place to worship him. The Lord will provide for his people uh, as long as we're willing to, uh, to stay by his side and let the Holy Ghost uh, guide us. But there... The Holy Ghost is what's on my mind, and I was thinking when I first got the, the Holy Ghost, uh, I tried and, and tried and tried to get it for, for years. I was 12 when I got saved, and I was, and after that, I would go down to the front almost probably every service and, and go down to go to the altar or just go down and get prayed for because I wanted the gift of the Holy Ghost, but I never seemed to get it. No matter how much I tried, no matter how much I cried, no matter how much I spoke, I could never get the Holy Ghost. And it is uh, an action that we have to, uh, Sister Jada said it's an act, uh, it was an action. It, there's more than just saying, I want the Holy Ghost, but there are things that are required to get the Holy Ghost. You have to open your mouth. Uh, you're speaking, when you when you speak in tongues, you're speaking. So for your natural English that we speak to, to turn into another t a language, you have to be speaking out loud for the Lord to, to, to change your voice. He's not going to just, you can't just, sit there and pray in your head and you're, you start speaking in tongues in your head, it doesn't work that way. Uh, but you have to be speaking your, your natural tongue out loud and, and praising the Lord and speaking to him. And whatever you say, there is no right thing to say. There's no wrong thing to say. I know Brother Broderby tells the story when he was, when he was getting the Holy Ghost, he, would, he yelled out glory. And then he yelled out glory again and, and glory again. And, uh, and that, that's what got the Holy Ghost. When I, when I received it, uh, something just clicked in my head. We were singing that song there. Um, 
And Jesus, there's just something about that name is what was being sung. And so uh, I just started speaking the words Jesus out loud. And that's all it was. It wasn't like, Jesus, fill, please fill me with the Holy Ghost. Or Jesus, I'll do anything. Just fill me with the Holy Ghost or whatever it was. But I was just speaking his name. Uh, just Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. And after uh, my third or fourth Jesus, the Lord changed that uh, changed that natural English tongue away and gave me the gift of the Holy Ghost. And my life has been altogether different ever since then. Um, but there is no special thing you have to do. There's no special thing you have to say. It's all in, it's all in the matter of your, your heart being open, your heart being ready to accept it. It's hard to be, and I, I know none of the young ones are out here, but it's a hard thing to explain to someone that doesn't have the Holy Ghost uh, how to get it or what you do because you can't just say, here's a, here's a list of the different things you have to do. It's not like that. Uh, when you're when you're ready, the Lord knows you're ready, but you can't just tell somebody you need to let go. That's what Brother Bobby would say. Some people would say, hold on, or some people would say, let go or do this. It does, it's not like that. Um, but once the once the once you're ready and you and you know when you're ready, you 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 receive the gift of the Holy Ghost when you're ready. There was somebody at the uh, they were speaking at the campground that on that first night that six people got the gift of the Holy Ghost and. Uh, there was a couple that came in. Somebody just invited them from some other church or something, and uh, and they received the gift. What was that? Yeah. Yeah, some people in the campground had met some people out while they were shopping or eating or something. They invited them out to the campground. So they came. this, this family came in, and and both, I think, the husband and the wife received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Had never, had never been in a body church before, had never been in a— uh, a meeting like that before, and the Lord filled them with the Holy Ghost. Uh, there must have been something in their hearts that they were they were ready and willing to accept it. They were re ready for a change, and uh, you don't have to be in the church your whole life to get to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can be, and I'm sure they had some kind of understanding of the Lord already. The Lord doesn't just fill somebody with the Holy Ghost just to fill them. So they had to know they had to they had already be saved. You don't get the Holy Ghost without being saved first. It doesn't. You may get the you may get saved in the Holy Ghost in the same night. But you don't get the Holy Ghost and then go back and ask for forgiveness of your sins after you've, you. It come, there are stages that you, that it comes in. You can't get water baptized at, at a different at the end. But you should as soon as you get saved, you should receive. You should ask for. You should ask for pastor. I don't know if there's anyone here that hasn't been water baptized as far as the. I know some of the young ones haven't. But as soon as you're saved, you should ask for water baptism. You should get what. You shouldn't wait on that for a specific time or a specific place there's no special time i mean you should ask the lord to, you should ask your pastor that lord can we get our pastor can we get water baptized it's a necessary thing and there's no like i said there's no special time there's no special age it's whenever you're saved you need to get water baptized to to, to complete that process you, you get you ask for forgiveness of the sins and you use the water to complete that process of forgiveness um but there's no like i said there's no special time to wait it's the, the time is always now we need to we, we need to do it now for all the ones that haven't been water baptized. But back to the, the Holy Ghost, it's like I said, it's a miracle in itself to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There's no greater gift. Uh, there's not really a greater miracle because our eyes are made open. We are made spiritually alive at that point. It's a spiritual resurrection. I had wrote down here, just as Jesus has raised the dead in the past when he was in this world, but he does that for every person when he gives them the Holy Ghost. He gives them a spiritual resurrection. He raises them spiritually from the dead. And until that point, uh, you're 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 spiritually dead, and that, that kind of sounds weird, but because you're alive, but that's when that that new man comes alive. We all talk about the old man. So the day we're born, that old man is already alive. Uh, but the day you receive the Holy Ghost, that that new man begins to start breathing. He begins to take uh, breath, and at that point, that is when you can start being purified. Uh, but until that point. You can't become purified until you have a new man to, be, to start working on the old man. It takes that Holy Ghost to start killing the old man. And, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to kill the old man. We're here to, uh, to make heaven our home. And the only way to do that is to completely kill that old man. And Lord, help us to do that. Um, but there in Acts 2, this is when the Holy Ghost was given. And I'll just start at 2 and 1. And it said, when the, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one, in one accord, in one place. They all came with the same mindset. Uh, the, 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 the do what the Lord wanted them to do. Uh, they didn't come with a different agenda, but they all came in, in one mind and one accord uh, to see what the Lord had, 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 had wanted for them. And there in two it said, and suddenly there came a sound from, from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and filled the house while they were sitting. 
And there appeared with them a cloven tongue as of like fire, and it sat upon them. And they were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and, be, and, give, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of them gave utterance. Uh, as you can see, it's an outward manifestation of an inward glory, as we say. And uh, they, it, it, there's, a, there's evidence in speaking in tongues. You can ask somebody, did you speak in tongues? And there's some I've heard that... Uh, they won't even ask their they won't ask their kids if they've got the Holy Ghost. They, they they don't want to put that pressure on them because if you ask them if they don't have it, then they feel pressured to go and get it. And then if you if you ask them and they they do, maybe they don't. Uh, there's just weird weird concepts that people have that you don't want to do that. You don't you, so you don't just talk about it. Uh, they some people think just because you're a good person that means you have the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's or that you're once you're saved that you have the gift of the Holy Ghost. That it's it's just all it's a package deal. But they're two separate things. Getting saved and getting the Holy Ghost are two separate acts. Uh, the Lord does them both. We, Brother Bobby can't save us. Brother Bobby can't give us the Holy Ghost. The Lord has to. He can water baptize. Um, but the other two, the Lord has to do. Um, but it isn't a package deal once you're saved that you just have the Holy Ghost. Many people believe that. Many people believe that uh, you don't have to speak in tongues. That was for back in the day. Um, but if it was good enough for, for that, that when the church was just started. And, and the church was just started, so if it was good enough that for them, that's what we're trying to get back to. Uh, we're trying the latter church is going to be greater than the former church. We're trying to get back to what they had. Doctrinally, I think we're, we're just about there if we're not there, but we're trying to get back there in every other case. We're trying to get back to what the, the early church had. Uh, the early church was you know, pretty much perfect when it first started until man got in the way and started tearing it down again, and then it went back into the wilderness. But now we're, we're past that. We're bringing it back out. And it's been out for many years since Brother William Souders had started his work, and the Lord brought him out and said, I want, I want you to preach my gospel. Uh, they were preaching his gospel back in, in, the, in those times there in Acts. Paul and all of them were preaching the Lord's gospel. They weren't preaching their own gospel. But man can get caught up and do their own thing and say their own things, and uh, it, it took it out of the wilderness, and it was left, left cold and unheard for many, many, many years. Uh, but aren't you thankful that the Lord used men in our day I guess not in our day, but he is using men in our day, but he used men back 100 and, I guess 120 years ago or 100, something like that, 100 something years ago, 110 years ago, uh, to bring that back, uh, that we have a chance to hear what they used to hear, have a chance to hear what the Lord wanted his people to hear. I can go to any other church and hear what man wants to hear and hear what, what people want man to hear. I don't want to hear what just any man has to say or any woman has to say, uh, but I want to hear what the Lord has to say. And those are the only words of life that we're going to bring. Those are the only words that are going to bring forth life are the words of the Lord. Any word of man isn't going to bring forth life. And any man that has any kind of knowledge of Scripture can say good things. But we're not here to just hear good things. I don't want to, anybody can say good things. If they know the Lord or if they have any, like I said, any kind of knowledge of the Bible, you can say good things. Even if you have every doctrine down, you can say good things. Um, but I'm not here to just listen to good things. I'm here to listen for the Lord. Uh, it's the Lord that's going to bring forth the life. And the Lord that's going to anoint the man or woman speaking those words that's going to bring forth life. Uh, it doesn't, uh, they, there's a, a term that says a head knowledge is a dead knowledge. If all you want to use is your knowledge just to, to preach and, and teach at people or to hurt people. There's been people, in, and I've heard, that use the scriptures to hurt people. They, they, they bully people with their scriptures because they had just a vast knowledge. That's not what we're here to do. Well, this, this word that we have is supposed to bring forth life. It's supposed to lift people up, not to hurt people, not to bash people for having it wrong. They can't, people can't help what they don't know. Uh, uh, we're all ignorant in some things, and Lord can open our eyes as he did. We have a, a, our vision is getting brighter. We had to sing a song or something that, this morning that said our, our vision is getting brighter. At one point in our lives, we didn't have a vision at all. Um, but as, as time has gone on and we, our willingness to learn, our willingness to, to sit back and listen to the, the great men of uh, great men of women of God, our eyes, are, our vision has begun clear and, and clear and clear. It gets clearer every day, as that song said. And, and only the Lord can do that. But at one point, our eyes were our dim as a, as a newborn, as a newborn pup. That they can't open their eyes. And we can't, as that for the brother Patton that tells that story, he tried to open up the, the puppy's eyes because he wanted them to see. No matter how much we want to those the people out in this world to see, uh, we we can't physically or spiritually open their eyes for them. That's something only the Lord can do. But the Lord can do it. He's did it for He did it for my, myself, and He's done it for everybody here. If you're here today, the Lord has given you a vision. You're not here because you're you you stumble in here on accident, and and to even stay. Um, 
is, is a miracle in itself to be here. You see, as I said last night, there's been many people that have come. There's been very even more people that have gone uh, because they want to do their own thing. This isn't what they want anymore. They think they found something better, but there is nothing better than the, than the, than the body of Christ. This is, this is it. And it takes different things. There are requirements to make the body of Christ. The people say, you can't say who's in the body and who's out of the body. The church speaks for itself who's in the body and who's out of the body. If they meet those requirements, uh, the spirit of the mother will be in that church. Uh, you can feel that. And Brother Delbert, you were saying the peace, the joy, the love. Uh, the, you feel that. It's that spirit of the mother that you feel, Brother Delbert. Uh, and we have that here. The doctrine will make you part of the body. The doctrine that is being taught beyond this pulpit will make will determine whether you're in the body or out of the body in the order that the church is in. Whether How you do things in order, how you don't do things in order, will determine whether you're in the body or not. You can't have two or the three. You can't have one or the three. But you have to have all of the requirements to be considered part of the body. And it isn't that man justifies who's in the body. The Lord just said that. The Lord put forth what makes the body. Uh, and Lord, aren't you thankful that we are that we can be considered in the body today? That I didn't say we were in the body, Brother Bobby didn't say we're in the body, but the Lord has said that Sykes and Missouri is in the body. The Lord has put us in his name. The Lord has opened this door and has kept this door open for the last almost 39 years this year, almost 40 years next year. The Lord has done that. When the when the people had said this church will close when I leave, or this person will, when that person falls, the rest of the church will go, or whatever that whatever was said. Through all those different things that people have said, through all those different things that people have done, this place has remained open. This, the people have remained faithful that are here. And this church, as I said a couple weeks ago, has been, has been the, this is the most peaceful this church has ever been since I've been here in the last 15 years. There's such a peace here. There's such a, a love here, Brother Delbert, uh, that goes beyond explanation. And, that when it, and that's because the Lord is here. Uh, the Lord is doing this. The Lord is pulling people out. And the Lord will bring people in, and not just random people. He will bring in the ones that uh, that He wants in. Uh, I think that that young couple that were here a couple of weeks, uh, I guess a, about a month or two ago, that were here. I still believe that the Lord had brought them here to come from somewhere across the country, from across the world, to across the country to the, a place in the middle of nowhere, to bring them here. The Lord is in that. Um, it's just up to them to see that the Lord is in that. I know she texted Amber last night and and had had said. Uh, we haven't forgotten about you with the harvest season and all that going on. There's just been a lot of there's been a lot of work, uh, and that's I guess that's part of harvest season. I know Amber has a friend and Nora's friend's dad. He's in the he's in the farm and he's working pretty much nonstop every single day when harvest season starts. That's it's just part of it, I guess. But um, but I'm thankful that we have a vision that no matter how much work there is to do, that the church has to come first. I wouldn't I wouldn't work a job if it was going to take me out of church. No matter how many how much money they offered me. They offered me millions upon millions upon millions. I wouldn't take the job. And, and this world would think you're crazy for not taking a job like that. Um, but I found something worth living for. And it isn't for my job. It isn't for my employer. It isn't for my, my family. But it's for my Lord. It's for my Savior. That's why I work. Or that's why I work for the church. I'm not working for this. I work for this world to, so I can port, support the church. I've said that many, many times. And that's how it will be. I work to support this place. I work to support my family second. But I work to support this place first. This is my everything. And I, the only way to keep it my everything is to keep working on it, to keep to keep showing up, to keep every time these doors are open, we got to keep coming in. When the pastor's not here, we got to keep coming in. When the the, the, the band leader's not here, we got to keep coming in. When half the church is gone, we got to keep coming in. There's there's no there's no room for excuses. There's no room for I can't do this because I'm doing that, or I can't do this because I'm doing that. We have to make a make a a commitment to the Lord. When I came into the when I came back in. I made a commitment to the Lord uh, that I'm going to serve you like I've never served you before. And I've kept my I've kept my end of the deal, Lord, and I continue it will continue to do my um, uh, do, to do my part because there is a part that each of us must uh, each of us must do. It isn't just on the Lord to, to do our work, walk for us. The Lord, the Lord won't walk for us. He may carry us. At some point, is that the, that poem Sister Lawanda mentions uh, when that, that when there's only one footprint in the sand, we wonder why did the Lord leave us? But those are the times that the Lord is carrying us, and there are times in our life uh, where the Lord will carry us because we're so down, we're so hurt, we're so offended. The Lord will help us until we can get back on our feet again, and then He'll walk right beside us. Um, but we aren't ever alone. 
uh, those, those, that poem that people think they're alone when they're walking, when the, there's only one foot of, uh, one set of footprints. And if you're not walking with the Lord, if you don't have a Lord in your life, you are walking along. Uh, it's not a question of wonder if you are, you are. You have to have the Lord in your heart. You have to be a child of his for him to walk by you. He doesn't just walk by anyone just because he wants to. He walks by the ones that want him to walk by him. And I want the Lord to walk by us. I want the church uh, to let the Lord in. And so it takes it takes worship, as my wife was playing these songs. It takes people singing, people clapping, people raising their hands, uh, people moving out. Um, and not that you have to do all those different things in that order. Uh, but it takes a worship. It takes it, it takes an action. And on our part is what I'm getting at. It takes action, as Sister Jada had mentioned. There's an action that each of us may do. Um, and I was thinking of that 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 po or that dream my wife had the other day about Sister Alice playing. I don't think I've ever heard you tell that dream. If you did, I don't remember. Especially the part about Sister Alice playing in the band. But we all have whether you're playing an actual instrument or you're just um, there was a, a part that you had in that in that in this church. There was a role that you had, a position that you had. Um, we all have a spot in this church. Uh, <coughs> whether whether it's playing in the band or. Uh, doing an usher or mowing the lawn or whatever we're doing, we all have a, an important role. There's not a big person or a little person in this place at all. The pastor's not greater than the rest of the saints, and the saints aren't greater than the pastor. The piano player's not greater than it. There's no bigger person in this church. Everybody just has a different position. Uh, the pastor is just as accountable to the, the Lord as the rest of the saints are, um, if not more accountable, because they have all the saints that they have to take care of, all the saints they have to feed and, and water and make sure they're not being going into the ditch. The, the worst thing, the, the, if the pastor's blind, they will lead, it says the blind lead the, the what does it say? The, the blind lead the blind, they'll end up in the ditch. The blind pastor will lead the, the blind church into the ditch. And that the church is, the, the church is blind because the pastor is blind. You are who you, you, you are what you teach. Uh, if, you're, if you're teaching the wrong things, the, the people are going to be fed wrong. Yeah, but I'm thankful that we're in a place that we aren't being fed wrong, that we're being fed right. We're bringing, uh, we're uh, uh, hearing words of hope, words of truth, words of life. Um, that's what we're here for. And if, if Brother Bobby was teaching the wrong things and doing the wrong things, I wouldn't be here today. Um, but Brother Bobby's not doing the wrong things or teaching the wrong things or going the wrong way. Uh, there's no, he's not blind in any way, shape or form. And I think everybody here will, will agree to that because we're all here. We've all whether it's been 40 years, I know some of us have been here since Brother Bobby started. There's, I think Sister Alice has been here since close to the beginning, and Brother David's been here since close to the beginning. That's almost 40 years of your life, uh, or close to it if you was close to that, of, of living under who the Lord's brought you under, and not questioning, as I think Sister Alice mentioned that last night, or it might have been today, if you could go, if you wanted to go somewhere else, but you... Uh, yeah, yeah, it was you, Sister Alice, last night, because you talked about the prodigal son, and wish you could come home after you realized you made a mistake. <clears throat> Lord, we have to stick through all the all the all the hard times that come our way. There's going to be more hard times that come to Sykes, the Missouri. There's going to be. You deal with people. There's going to be more things that come. Um, but it's be, it's the people that are willing to stick through those hard times, <clears throat> willing to continue to work, willing to continue to do what the Lord wants them to do. Those are the ones He's going to work with. Those are the ones that He is molding into His image. Brother W, you said that it's the it's the quality. The quality here is that we're being molded in his image. We're not just being molded like the rest of this world. We're being molded in his image. Uh, it takes the hard times. It takes that fire to get there. And I totally got off course of what I was talking about, what I had in mind to talk about today. Um, but I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing for this church. I'm thankful for the uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost, as I, as I, was, as I started talking about. Uh, that that leads us out of the destruction. That leads us out of the uh, the darkness that the that this world is. They're in Colossians one. One and yeah, one and ten. It's Colossians one and ten. They that might work walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in knowledge of God. Uh, we're here trying to be pleasing to the Lord, trying to be fruitful in what we have, trying to be uh, growing in what we have, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering and joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, made us meet to partakers to the inheritance of the saints in the light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. And that power of darkness is this, this outside of this, outside of the body is the power of darkness. Outside of this 
uh, great marvelous thing that we have is that great darkness out in this world. But he brings us out. When we receive that gift of the Holy Ghost, we are made alive. Uh, we are made into this light uh, that he has trans it's a, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. But we are made alive when we are given the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we are made translated in the, the light of his dear son. We are made alive to his son. There's another, there's another scripture that talks about being, uh, I think it's in Ephesians, and it talks about being, being quickened in his image or something to that effect, being, that being quickened is to made alive. Uh, he makes us alive. Just as I said, as he blew a life into Adam, he became alive. He blows life in each and every one of us when we receive that gift of the Holy Ghost. And we are made alive. At that point, our, our walk starts with him. He, we, are, we are known to the Lord. Not that he doesn't know us before, uh, but we are known even more to the Lord when he gives us the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I'm, I'm thankful for what we have here. Like I said, I kind of got derailed and started talking on different things. But I'm thankful for what we have. Thankful for the opportunity to grow uh, like we have the opportunity to grow here. As Sister Alice mentioned that, that uh, these young ones have the opportunity to stand to their feet because there, are, uh, there aren't hundreds of people here. I wouldn't have the ability to speak, stand to my feet if there were hundreds of men sitting on the platform. Um, you'd never get an opportunity to stand to your feet. You'd never get an opportunity to practice. You'd never get an opportunity to grow if you had tons and tons and tons of people that, that also wanted to do the same thing. They want their chance to speak. But and if everybody had, even if there's 25 people up on the, or 20 or 10, that's a lot of people. You, 10 people can't speak in one service, or 10 ministers couldn't speak in one service, or 10 helps, or whatever they are. It'd be too much. Um, but we have, we're at the point now where the, we do have the ability for everybody to take their chance in the service and and practice. Uh, we are here to practice. We are here to, every one of us is here to practice. When you're testifying before the Lord, you're practicing your talk. And you're not just talking when you testify. You're not just talking to everybody here. You're talking to the Lord as well. Uh, so don't just think I'm just talking to these people. And they, But you're talking to the Lord. When you testify, especially in the house of the Lord, you're speaking to him. He hears everything that you say. I mean, he hears you everything and knows everything before you say it outside. Uh, but it's something special when you're here. You're in his house and you're talking to, to his people, but you're talking to the Lord as well. Uh, and continue to, to continue, Sister Jada, continue to testify. And I and I just say that because you testified today, but every young person should testify. Every young one should continue to testify, continue to take their 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 practice. Nobody's going to think anything. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's people that thought things when I first started standing, but I, mean, I know there is for a fact, but that's another story. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm thankful that the, the church years had their patience with me and that continue to have their patience with me even to, to this day uh, to let me try to be utilized by the Lord. And I, and I hope every time I stand on my feet, the Lord, uh, that I let the Lord use me. I, you can stand to your feet and not let the Lord use you. You can stand to your feet I'm gonna say, and say, I'm going to say what I want to say. And, and those aren't the kind of people that we want here. If that's what they want, if that's their mindset, that they only want to say what they want to say and they only want to do, they only want to work the way they want. We don't want those people here. I know I said this was an open door assembly, and it is. But we want the people here that the Lord wants here. We want the people here that are willing to work the way the Lord wants them to work. That's how a successful church is going to grow. It isn't going to grow with a bunch of people saying, I, 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 or me, 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 me. This isn't about you or yourself or your family. It's about the Lord. And if everybody that comes in puts the Lord first, then we can have a successful church. <clears throat> but I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing here in Sykeston. I can't express that enough, that the Lord is doing something here in Sykeston. This world may not see it. The city may not see it, um, but we see it. And, and as long as the Lord is happy with what we're doing, that's the only person that matters in this life is, is pleasing the Lord. It isn't pleasing uh, the president or the vice president or any other country or any other uh, group of people. As long as we're doing what the Lord wants us to do in here in Sykeston, we are going to be victorious here in Sykeston. That the Lord has his name here in, in Sykeston. He hasn't taken his name off the, off the doorpost. It's, it's still alive and well here today. He, he, he showed up today, and he'll, and he'll be here Thursday. He'll be here Saturday and Sunday until, until, uh, until as long as we're all here, the Lord will be here. And, and I'm going to be here as long as, the, as long as these doors are open. I'm going to be here. Uh, the Lord wanted, called me here to be in Sykes, and the Lord's called you all here to be in Sykes, and, uh, and this is our home. And you defend your home. You work hard on your home. If you're, if you're, we're working on our home now. I'm painting cabinets and doing all this stuff, and I'm trying to make my home worth living in. 
naturally, but this is our, this is home is even more important. This home is, we're trying to make our home, our spiritual home worth living in. Um, we, we sing and we practice, we have band practice, we have all the different things to get this alive and well, to get it presentable, we, to cut the grass, to make it presentable to the, the people, to this community. You know, they love that church. It's easy to go hire companies to come do the grass for you. And we can either, we can do that if we wanted to. Come and have people clean the church for us. Uh, and there's people that do that too. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But there's something about when you do it yourself. Uh, you, you feel that love. Uh, it, it's it's a, an, an act of love, Sister Jada. When you, when you clean the church, you, you're cleaning the church because you love the church, because you love the Lord. Uh, when you're hiring somebody else to do it, it doesn't take any love to do that. Those people don't care about the church. Those people don't care about the grass. It's just another paycheck. You know, but when we do it ourselves, it's, a, it's an act of love for, the, the, around the, for our people. Uh, we show that we love the, the church by mowing the lawns, for, for the men that are mowing the lawns, and uh, for everybody else that, that cleans the church. Those are little things that we do that show our, our, for our love for the church. Um, but we all love this place, and we should all take care of this place. It's, I think it was Brother Garland that said, uh, and Brother Bobby mentioned this every once in a while, that after every service, that everybody should look to their feet and look to their left and to their right. And if there's any little pieces of the paper or candy wrappers or popsicle sticks or sucker sticks, I know Brother Bobby's been giving out sucker sticks, suckers that have sticks, don't let those pieces of paper stay on the floor, especially candy. Stuff like sucker sticks and candy gets sticky, and it sticks to the carpet, and then it leaves stains on the carpet. <clears throat> Look around. We all want to. We all want to be. Uh, we don't have to wait to the next person to clean our trash. We can clean our own trash. Everybody should clean up their part. Everybody has little seats. Everybody sits in the, pretty much the same seat. But clean up your area. I don't know how I got into that. But we all want to. We all want. Those are just little things that we can do to show our love for the church. It isn't just because we want a clean place, but it's an act of love that how much we love this place.